Welcome to another episode of the Piano Ninja Tricks podcast. Hi, I'm Lisa Spector, your piano ninja, helping you become a piano ninja so everything feels easy for you at the piano. Well, I hope that sounded easy. It's it's not, <laughs> but it's starting to feel easy. It's the opening of the Godowski transcription of the Chopin Alien Harp Two. Normally, the melody is all here in your right hand, but I am recovering from a shoulder fracture, my humerus up here. So my arm is in a sling, is in a immobilizer, as you can see right here. And uh, not, I need to keep it as still as possible. So I am playing a lot of music for left hand and actually a lot of Godowski. I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be demonstrating from this uh, Godowski transcription today, but I'm also learning the Godowski metamorphosis, symphonic metamorphosis transcription of Strauss, which is a demanding 10 or 12 minute left hand piece, maybe one of the hardest I've ever done. But I'm going to be talking to you today about how to make everything easier. And in the meantime, uh, a couple things that are coming up I want to let you know about. I am giving a talk because of this accident, injury, whatever you want to call it, because of this fracture healing that has me at first felt like a setback. I'm giving a talk called From Setback to Breakthrough, and that is going to be on Tuesday, January 30th. It's free, and if you'd like an invitation to that, I will leave the link below in the comments, and or you can find it on Breakthrough.com. Sorry breakthrough.lisaspector.com to join that event or have an access to the replay where I'm talking about if if you're someone who's had any sort of setback and if you're middle-aged or beyond probably you have at some point if you have any hand arthritis or a fracture or broke your wrist or hurt your thumb or whatever the cut your foot whatever the thing is that's held you back emotionally and possibly physically from playing the music of your dreams, join the talk. You'll you'll be very inspired. This this is not my first rodeo. I recovering from 2017 when I fell and broke my right hand very severely, seven fractures, four surgeries, 186 hand therapy sessions. This isn't nearly as bad because I don't need surgery and so recovery will be faster, but I'm a little older and it's 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 taking its toll on me and I'm taking notes and I'm learning how to have breakthroughs because of it. So look forward to sharing that with you. Okay, so back in episode three, I talked about quick reflex motion. It's one of the core piano ninja tricks, how to jump quickly. I'm going to be applying that today. And then episode five, I talked about this, how to make everything easier. There's three basic ways to make things easier. One is slow down. Two is hands separate, or if you're playing one hand alone, it would be voices separate. And three is small sections of repetition. So those are the basic ones, but now I'm going to get into more advanced ones of how to combine, how to make things easier when it's more complex. So I'm going to be combining quick reflex motion with how to make things easier and adding in some additional steps in this etude. What I have found is that even though I learned this when I broke my hand and I, I started learning it in 2017, performed it in 2018 at a live virtual event and then recorded that, that was when I didn't have access to use my right hand. Then I spent the next several years doing a hybrid of opening with my left hand with a Godowski and then bringing in my right hand with the original Chopin, which I called the marriage between my two hands. So the more difficult part of this etude, I really haven't played in years. And I will tell you, when I went back to learn it, it was like, have I ever done this? It just wasn't sounding familiar at all. And it was, and it's, it's taxing. It, it's a Kodowski etude transcription. So here's, I'm going to start on the uh, bottom of the third page where it gets more difficult for me and tell you, I'm going to talk you through how I've been practicing it. And I'm learning this to play for my Piano Ninja Tricksters club on the at the end of the month and then I play for a big online event uh, with thousands of people on February 1st so I have to have this ready so um, this is how I'm learning it it seems like um, this is how I'm learning it step by step so I'm going to take a small section of this it's very 
The patterns are repetitious as new harmonies, but I think if I demonstrate in this section, it can apply to anything in this piece, as well as anything that you're working on as well. So when I have this next section, the first thing I do is play it in solid chords first. So the reason being is when I play in solid chords, I'm taking three to six notes at a time. My eye is forced to see those three to six notes. So it's a chunk of notes so that when then when I go to play it as written, two things happen. My hand is already falling into place and two, my hand just knows where it's going. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna keep the rhythm, always rhythm as the foundation. doing is I'm I'm each bead is divided into two and then I'm using as you can tell quick reflex motion meaning I'm jumping I'm playing slow but I'm jumping fast I'm not hanging out here and then moving I'm moving instantly so right now I'm looking at the camera because I can do this with my eyes closed I've, I've trained my body. I've only practiced this a little bit, but I've still trained my body. It's like a measuring device in my body to know how far to go. So now I'm going to see if I can keep that tempo and play it as written. I might need to slow it down. I don't know yet. So let's see. tempo is okay and I'm gonna actually just go a tiny bit faster not too much though so I feel like that's getting there the rest of the piece is pretty much the same patterns. It's just different harmonies. So, so I still have to apply that to the rest of the piece, but that's how I would do it. The only part that changes, and that I haven't even gotten there yet this time, is at the end, let me do this. Um, so I'll do this little section. It, it's just chords, two note chords, where I'm jumping every single, there's six sixteenths, triplet sixteenths to the beat, so I'm jumping every one. Jumping meaning quick reflex motion. And I, and I would go through that. So um, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm just, I'm, when I say I'm taking my time, I'm, I know I'm at a deadline. I have to have this ready by February 1st, but I'm being intentional about how I practice and not worrying about the deadline because I feel like that would slow me down. I'm actually focusing on just one thing each practice session, what I need to do because I don't have my normal energy light now. Some of my practice, off many of my practice sessions are 10 minutes long, but I'm getting a lot done in those 10 minutes. So closer to February 1st, what I'll do here is I'll just play it in full for you and, um, I have some, I have a YouTube video from 2018, I think, where I'm playing it on an old clunky piano at San Francisco, sorry, San Jose Airport, and my right hand was still in the cast at the time. It might have been 2017, not sure. And, um, but it's, it is a bit of relearning right now. So hope that was helpful. And if you'd like Piano Ninja fingering tricks, I still have them available for you for free at pianoninjatricks.com. It's where I take you through how to make quick decisions on fingering to make fingering easier for you at the piano. And I will be back next week. And my plan is to get this podcast back on podcast apps as well as on YouTube by then too. So thank you for listening. I'm Lisa Spector, your Piano Ninja.